Hey everyone, I'm Clue. It's time to read some more lore, synthetic futures. But I do just want to say, like, I hate reading. I absolutely hate reading, in all honesty, right? I've hardly read any books, like, cover to cover, uh, mainly for, you know, learning purposes in class or, you know, book reports and stuff like that. But in my spare time, I am not an avid reader. Yet, here we are with LSS just sucking me in with these nice, short, just beautiful articles. And what I sort of want to put out there, like this art style, could you imagine if they released picture books, adult picture books? Again, just this style of art, this this type of writing. I think a lot of us would eat that up. Anyway, to the article. Not again, Bates Dash, squashed between Max and the armrest. I was gonna say armistice, of a stinky sofa. Nothing's perfect, not even our wonderful city, but I think we're close. We have more opportunity than anywhere in Wraith, and the system for bloody systems, smash them all. And the systems for growth. I'm curious what you tried to try to add. Uh, are they, uh, do they have more opportunity? Right? Yes, it's, it seems to be a pretty heavy, you know, commerce capital, but I would kind of like to, to live in like Solana <laughs> more so than, than metrics. Cause it seems a lot more cutthroat. Okay. So excited as Max by this notion of wanton destruction that he slops his Agmadalaza so brain juice, onto the already sticky floors of the low lake hideout. The half circle of rainbow hair, skitch garbed, anarchists, skitch garbed. Learning so many words through this too. Snarl their collective agreement and add more slop fizz to the growing puddle. Dash size, happy to drink her hers rather than spill it. Does that include the health system? What, hospitals, the auto ambo service, medicines? Her claim, her calm logic gets bewildered glares from Max. No, not the health system, obviously. Or the transport system, trains, trams, the roads you ride your bikes on, well, no. Or the sewer system, ah, gotta, gotta love this, this type of friend, right? We all have one, surely. I'm pretty sure I'm this, I'm this friend. <laughs> uh, or the sewer system, the oppressive systems, dash, you know, the ones that exploit us, grind us down. Yes, that's why you gotta be specific, right? If you're gonna make a point, you gotta make sure it's specific. I don't wanna, I don't wanna try to, you know, assume on your behalf. The mere mention of the E word, like the enforcers, I skipped this line, didn't I? No, right? Oh, anyway, the oppressive systems dash, you know, the ones that exploit us, grind us down like the enforcers. The mere mention of the E word makes the anarchist twitchy. Particularly Max, he leans forward. So in her heyday, right? Dash is an anarchist to some degree because she is going around with them doing whatever they're doing. I'd assume, right? Rather than just being uh, Max, Bella, I already forgot her full name. And Ricky, I already forgot the other two. He leans forward, cha changes to a hush whisper, like that fool of a half decent surveillance device. Ah, no, no, it's his explaining. He's like a half decent surveillance device. They've been tracking us all for weeks now. Right, she says, deeply skeptical. That explains the venue. Last place anyone would want to look, right? Circuit Breaker, a sour synth band from Sprawl. Starts up another sullen lullaby. Okay, so this is like an underground pub. It's not just their hideout. Lullaby to urban dissatisfaction from a low stage in the corner. Their off-tone notes suit the off-color walls and pungently off odor. Come on. Right, there's, there's tons of like grime and grunge and, and rock bands that are actually, you know, good. They don't just play for the sake of, uh, what's the word? Well, in, in some degree being off key and off rhythm, right? Just to be sort of like static. Too right agrees Max, missing the sarcasm. Got to adapt, they're getting smarter, you know. Who, the enforcers? The other anarchists scroll in collective agreement, scowl in collective agreement. Max leans close enough to dash to see the bloodshot veins in his bulging eyes. That should be under that. Although I guess it's it's for this, right? The surveillance device, but I think it suits that line a bit better. Do, 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 do. They know too much, turning up in places we don't even know we're going to yet. It's likely they can slit open our skulls and peer into our brains. It'll drivel. It's drivel, sorry. It's drivel like that that makes Dash Doubt Max even knows what he's going on, what he's going, even on his best days, where he's going. Sorry, I'm ripe with, with just misreading words today. Uh, he hasn't made sense since the day she first met him, but at least he speaks his nonsense with conviction. 
That's got to be why she enjoys coming to these meetings, why she attended them for several months now. Can't be out of youthful loyalty. No, it's the intensity, the raw passion of it all. Such a breath of fresh air after the sensible stuffiness of corporate life. But the paranoia. Pandemonium. Uh, yeah, sorry. Anytime I misread a word, I'm going to tell you what word I'm thinking. I don't know why. My brain just auto-completes. And like, like most <laughs> auto-completes on phones, it doesn't do too great of a job most of the time. And it's unsettling enough that she shunts the conversation back to safer ground. The systems you want to smash. Where would we start? The other anarchists look at each other. Suddenly shifty as rats in a refuse station. Refuse station? They're two words that I've never seen go together. Max eyes Dash for a long moment, sussing her out, judging her like he always does. Where would you start? Max throws back at her. Dash thinks it over. Although the last 10 years have seen a rapid increase in techlo industry share of the energy and apparatus market, there's still just a drop in the bucket compared to the city's oldest and most gargantua corporation, Cogworks, she concludes. So I'm going to assume that they don't know she's Dash Techlo at this point, and it's going to be wherever she quote unquote betrays them. I don't think she actually will. I think it'll just be, you know, a mishap, right? That look, she can't get in trouble because she's Techlo, and then it seems like she's betraying them. Just a you know, think ahead. Foreshadow, right? And then that sort of also makes sense why this article was placed after the last article. The woman next to Marx, Max, nudges him with her elbow, then glares at him through the mirror shades. It's fine, Rez. He fixes Dash with an unhinged grin. Miss Tech, no, never mind, they do know. Guilty by association. Like or not, she's an accomplice to conspiracy. Dash feels the hairs on her back of her neck stand up. She's not, so, she's not sure if it's from excitement or concern. You're really going after Cogworks. You'd rather go after Teclo Industries, Princess? Oh, ha, ha, Max. Such a wisecrack, counters Dash. Always with the princess come back. Dullard. Person? At least we're trying to change the system. Upgrade them. It's called problem solving. Well, well, derides Max to the amusement of his cronies. Teclo is a revolutionary organization. And here I thought it was just another grasping corp. How could I have been so mistaken? I didn't say that, it's just, don't worry, Dash. Max slaps her on the shoulder so hard that she drops her drink. Teclo's made a good fist of embarrassing the copper giant. A good fist. Hmm. Uh, but underneath the mirror, glass, and dynamicism, there's still a network of pipes pushing compressed steam like blood through the city's veins. Dash visualizes the sheer destructive grandeur of Max's dream. Stop the steam, she speculates. Stop the city. Ha, I knew you'd get it. She gets Max... In out of his tin pot mind. She gets Max She gets Max's out of his tin pot mind. She gets Max's crazy. Dash opens her mouth to say as much, but her retort is shattered by a knock at the door, or rather, a resounding thump of a Teclo pounder, followed by a shower of splinters. Grab your masks, shouts Max, as Rez and the anarchist duck for cover. He throws a mask at Dash as the room fills with gas and enforcers and the enforcers and enforcers and tugs at her tugs at her arm to follow him. She presses a mask to her face with one hand, drawing her techloplasma pistol with the other, then shoots the legs out from under the closest enforcer bot, sending it backwards onto the other humor form. So, bots, and then we also have humans that are leading them, which is interesting. We have young Dash. Is it? Can't be. We have other kid. We have... Other kids, we have, yeah, other kids. <laughs> through, the thickering, through the thickening smoke, Dash follows Max to a congregated iron wall. She covers their retreat with her pistol while he gives the back. <coughs> Ooh, that was bad, sorry. While he gives the barrier a solid kick, a pre-cut section of iron crashes to the ground and Max drags Dash outside. She rips the mask from her face and, tacks, and takes in a gulp of fresh air. Well. As fresh as the funky low lake ever gets. See, stresses Max, his own mask now dangling around his neck. Told you they're watching. Dash is about to reply when Max raises his chin to the sky, releasing an almighty howl into the Technicolor cityscape. The Technicolor cityscape. Then he bends forward, laughing into his knees like a pit hound until the last of his breath is exhaled. Exhaled. Yes. Again, for whatever reason, I read half, then I substitute. With his nervous energy expelled, Max mounts a pink and green motorbike and waves for Dash to jump on. She obliges, 
gripping his waist for balance as they roar off into an evening of neon and noise. Overheard, the wise eyes of Julius Teklovossen watch them from a flickering billboard as his mustached mouth carefully enunciates Teklo's latest slogan, be better than before, better than human. Dash looks over a soldier. Come on. Dash looks over her shoulder at the smoking building. The enforcers, both metal and meat, pouring out onto the street. Deep down, she knows why she's here and not back in the West Rides. One hour spent with these rebels is more fun than any time spent with Teclo White Coats. She laughs into Max's shoulder, a mechanical release of adrenaline and tension as they leave the law far behind them. Damn freedom feels good. Dash yawns so hard that her ears pop. Sorry to keep you up, says Thorax. Her neatly, these names, her neatly glossed lips pursed with disapproval. Sorry, Mum. Ah, interesting. Rough night's sleep, Dash covers. Must have been nervous about today. Understandable, I suppose. Her mother passes Dash a clipboard with the day's schedule typed out in Teclo standard. Ah, oh, they, they should have done a nice twist and done like a unique font. Right. 21 mechanology projects for you to survey. Don't spend more than half an hour on each one unless you want to lose even more sleep. Always the white coat, never the parent. Dash's shoulders, again, why? I keep skipping the H. Dash's shoulders sag under the weight of all that responsibility. Her parents might relish their status as senior researchers, but demanded, but, but be damned if Dash is to follow why am I doing this sentence? But damned if Dash is following in their one trick footsteps. If only she could hop onto a motorbook, motorbike and ride off. Okay, she can't be. It has to be Uncle Teclo Vossen. Uncle, right, because they're referring to her parents. So I assume that, you know, implies that they're both alive. And I think the direct relation is a bit off. I, I think, I'm guessing, right, either brother, mother, you know, something like that. Connect to Teclo Vossen. He found the company. They took it over once he perished. Something like that. Uh, she taps her watch and you're already late for your first appointment. Off you go. Dash stifles another yawn and heads down the corridor to the Wavenstone Laboratory, clumping a little clumsily in her corporate issue shoes. <laughs> so much alliteration. After the seventh hour, after the seventh home appliance, she wants to stick her head in a blender and press pulp. On the teeth, on the 10th, she's optimally measuring Wavenstones for insertion into the mech try teclo snap freeze she's optically 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 optimally measuring wyvernstone for insertion so i guess wyvernstone is a power core or something uh, if only she could retreat to a workshop where the real inventing happens a place where she can tinker and play try things out for the sheer creativity of it far away from the protocols and focus group budgets and tick boxes Focus groups, budgets, and tick boxes. So, uh, sorry, again, reading this, thinking about stuff. So Data Doll, right, is is coming off like she's Dash's creation, which is great, right? It's her attempt at what Teclo Vossen was attempting, right? But she's somewhat more successful and obviously a bit more joyous and sort of paralleling that, you know, there's the, the desire and the responsibility to make a better city. There's sort of stifled Teclo Vossen's uh, creativity versus Dash, who now doesn't want that responsibility, doesn't feel like she's obligated to that responsibility, and therefore has the ability to actually, you know, go all in on her creativity and come up with, again, the invention that Teclo Vossen was working towards, sentient AI, and that's what we get in the form of Data Doll, you know, version two. The Mech in a Box project offers her momentary relief, yes. She can imagine some amusing uses for a full body Evo that folds into a container the size of a briefcase. That would be cool, like instant equip, one card, equip four pieces. Uh, does it come in desert sand, she teases. The researcher stares at her blankly, then a clipboard with mounting apprehension. Never mind, she sighs and ticks the box. Six sanitation drones later, and she's ready to flush herself down. So ten home appliances, one sort of Evo box, right? And then six sanitation devices. Fun job. Just ticking everything off, right? Again, somewhere with her name and stature. It sort of seems like just a pen pushing job. Uh, okay. But just when she's reaching for the the chain, Wyvernstone opens a door. No, it's a person. Opens a door to a section of the needle that she didn't know existed or a bot. Do we have any knowledge of what Wyvernstone is? Someone enlighten me. Our secret macro lab states Wyvernstone. Like Dash couldn't work that out for herself. The cutting edge of human machine evolution. He, okay, so it's a person. He shows Dash that 
the reflex boosters and cognition nodes, the subdermal weaves and synthetic nerve cluster. Sorry, just because subdermal obviously in the skin and then weave being head or hair, right? Just the combination brings forward some funny imagery to me. And synthetic nerve clusters. It's a fascinating array of mechanologic, mechanological, mechanolog okay, sorry, there's too many symbols in this one. Mech analogical, mechanolog <laughs> There's a fascinating array of mech implants, but she's torn. Max, Max's words ringing eerily in her mind. It's like they can slit open our skulls and peer into our brains. Her mother mentioned none of this before. Who commissioned it? The scientists steal gray eyes show not a glint of emotion as he steers her back towards the entry instructions before your time instructions from before your time yeah okay so this is stuff that techlo Vossen was probably working on instructions from who wildenstone answers is to shut and lock the laboratory in her face right show me the toys and tell me i can't play with them very mature dr wildenstone muses dash still haven't forgiven me for the blue dust incident she supposes as she hobbies hobbles down the corridor on aching feet Normally one to take the stairs at the end of each day, she rides a lift down from the 47th floor and is greeted by a celebrity specter as she steps out into the lobby. Salutations, Dash. Have you been a productive techlo? The ghost moustache curls over a gleaming perfect smile. Dash knows for a fact that Destiny wasn't that good back then. Uh, what's this like? iRobot, the scene from iRobot, right? Where Will Smith first enters the lab and you have the doctor, right? Sure, Teglo Vicent, productively bored, bit weirded out at the end. The audio chuckles while the hologram nods with grand family approval. Okay, so she is directly related. Interesting. Right, again, no mention of kids, anything like that. So I'm curious, you know, how that, how that spawned. Uh, progression is never easy, but I've always said the future comes to those who innovate. Also gives us a time frame for his return, right? I, I know it says 50 years, but, you know, 50 years from when, right? but obviously this is the timeline he did with his stuff, his laboratory. Uh, and then 50 years later, he comes back in that time, two generations, yada, yada, yada. You get the, you get the gist. Uh, ooh, doo, 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 doo. You never said that HR program that into your microprocessor. Just because it's a lie doesn't mean it's not true. Dash is taken aback for a moment, rather obscure for the unusually one-sided digital intelligence. You thought that up yourself. The hologram smiles bleedingly, bleedingly. You have a restful evening dash. Yeah, so a bit weird because it's hinting that it's starting to talk for itself. Um, sure, Teclo Vossen. At home, with her sore feet up, the setting sun painting her East Rise apartment in warming pink. She tries to forget about her work, yet, try as she might, she can't shake those mecho mods from her mind. Those fascinating, though fascinating, they just don't sit well with her. The secrecy makes sense, considering how intrusive the technology is. To her, Evos are meant to enhance the human body, not replace it. Why the tangent? Who ordered it? She limps over to her terminals, logs into the Teclo network, and enters a few codes she's not meant to have. The sun gives way to bright city lights as she digs up a name. The esteemed Jules Teclo Visa. Teclo Industries founder, deceased for over 50 years. These days memorialized as a holographic mascot and salesman for the Teclo marketing department. Her namesake too. Her namesake too. Hmm. Dash. What? Her namesake too. Care of a weird quirk in a fanatical corporate culture. Every CEO adopts the surname Teclo. Ah, there we go. So they're not actually related. They just took over the name of Teclo out of a nostalgic sense of dynasty. So it was, he was a shite and he didn't have family. And it's just, they're using his name to, you know, prolong the legacy. The Vossen part is reserved for the esteemed Matt. Ah, okay, so that's why they're Dash Teclo, not Teclo Vossen. Ah, it's very intriguing, right? In terms of a, a hierarchy and a mentality to have towards a company. For the reserve for the esteemed magnates alone, Dash is descended from a former Teclo executive, right? But she's not connected to the current leaders. Okay, that's, that's a confusing family tree if you sub in, you know, the CEO lineage. Uh, though the apple has fallen rather far from the proverbial tree in her case. Piecing together what she can from Patchy Records, Dash finds Teclo Vossen assigned long-term intractable funding to a seemingly unconnected array of experiments. All were commissioned in the few months prior to the man's incineration in his old laboratory. The Mecco modes are the only viable result from decades of otherwise fruitless research. 
none of which syncs with the friendly mustached fox man, foe man, that greets her every morning at the needle, nor with the glowing reputation for gentle genius and wholesome scientific endeavor. From everything she's heard about the man, Teclo Vossen wouldn't have okayed her Teclo pistol, let alone surgical wetware. She codes a system worm to impersonate a system worm to impersonate Wyvernstone and burrows deeper into the Teclo's classified data forts. Teclo Vossen covered his tracks well, leaving only a single notification, received blatantly from the Iron Assembly two days after Teclo Vossen's death. Microprocessor DD 6.3, the chassis is received and installed in the Iron Hall basement. As per your instructions, Professor, it's ready to review at your discretion. DD 6.3, she mused, but they only go up to five. Ooh. Before her time, I suppose. The microprocessor was Teclo Vossen's greatest achievement. Artificial brains able to learn and act independently. From mining machines to enforcer bots, the microprocessor enabled an era of smart automatons. Yet even the top of the line brains, the Series 5, and this was made before Series 5 would have come out. No? Right? We're limited to specialized tasks, or they just never were able to replicate his advancements, and that's why we were stuck at five. Uh, the idiot savants were compared to your average human. We're limited to specialized tasks. Idiot savants who were compared to your average human, so at level five. Uh, greats at one or two things, lousy at the rest, but a series six. Who knew what that might be capable of, especially with 50 years of machine learning under its virtual belt? They know too much, turning up in places we don't even know where we're going yet. Maybe Max wasn't so paranoid after all. She taps at a comms number and holds her breath as it connects. What? Crackles the voice, distorted by multiple filters and relays. Underdog Cafe, Coppertown, one hour. I might know how they found you. Interesting. So she's teaming up to obviously get them in trouble now. Well, it will lead to their trouble. Max slams his fist down on the countertop. I bloody knew it. Da Dash winces and glances at the other patrons. No one seems to have noticed. The drinkers have the glazed eyes. Nowhere. Mm. The drinkers here have that glazed eye. Nowhere stare. Both people. Glazed eye, nowhere stare. Again, commas. Right. The glazed eye, nowhere stare of people who have seen and heard enough problems for one day. They're not looking to collect anymore. Hey, it's just a theory. One message from half a century ago. That's all the proof we have. Then let's get some more, rasps Max with a malicious glee. You want to go poking around the iron hall basement? Yep. He jabs his finger into the air. Let's poke them in the eyes. Can't oppress what you can't see. Good luck with that. As she pushes back her chair, Max rubs her wrist. Hard enough to hurt. Going somewhere, conspirator? Dash sends a charge down her Eva, enough to shock his grubby mitts loose. He waggles his fingers, blowing on them like they're hot, but the nasty smirk remains on his gaunt face. Like it or not, you're guilty by association. He folds his arm, infutably smug. Besides, you don't want to go to energize. I'll be f it'll be fascinating. Besides, you don't want to go to energize. It'll be fascinating. Energize the era held annually. The era held annually. So it's it's some sort of, of event and, you know, party to some extent. Uh, the era. Energize the era. So that's the name of it. Is held annually at Iron Hall. Opening in a week's time. I have other plans, she answers deadpan. My hyperdrivers need deoxifying. They caught Rez and half my crew dash. Even the bloody Ben holding them all at a half dozen different stations. Divide and conquer tactics. He leans over the table and uses a not so quiet whisper again. One of those stations is down the street from Iron Hall. Dash raises an eyebrow. Eighth precinct, Max nodes. They're holding Rez there, a few others with her. Jog jogging distance from the assembly security to provide backup. While I sneak for the conference basement and open the back door for you, while I sneak from the conference into the basement, open the back door for you, the anarchist raises his glasses of fortified tinker tea, a toast to their unwholesome alliance. While I sneak from the conference into the basement, why, why does this seem open-ended to me? Max knows they're holding blah, blah, blah. While I sneak from the conference into the basement and open the back door for you, wink, wink, go do something. Interesting. I, I suppose it would be a way that, you know, conspirators would talk, you know, again, insinuating a lot. Uh, the anarchist, but again, in like quotes or something, you know, action to back up again, an open statement. Uh, the anarchist raises his glasses of fortified tinker tea, a toast to their unwholesome license. Lions, welcome to the party. 
Dash gives him a long, hard look, sussing, judging like he does to her. She waits long enough to see him squirm, then clinks her glass against his. Wouldn't be one without me. Her business collar scratches at her throat. She started to wonder why in halitosis she signed up for this. Energize the era, brought to you by the Iron Assembly. The banner drapes gracefully above the entrance to the Iron Hall, the seat of power for Metric's municipal government. It's only two days off the conference and already Dash's corporate shoes are killing her feet. Perhaps it's part of the HR plot to wear workers down into a compliant misery. Dash forces a smile as the enforcer's human form who crack her techler industries attendee pass who check her, her pass. It's authentic. Well, yeah, I mean, surely, right, if she's still linked to, to someone who was high up, they'd have a decent understanding. Anyway, they're, they're automatons. She said lousy at a lot of things only good at some things. Uh, it's authentic. Her conference ticket booked and paid for by the mechanology department. Her mother was both surprised and delighted by her daughter's sudden passion for work. Dash did her best to disrupt her mum's happy delusion. To not disrupt. After taking a breath, after taking a deep breath to steady her nerves, Dash heads for the toilets. Finding them empty, she rests her briefcase on the bench top and activates her hidden comm. You read me? Buzzes Max's voice in her ear. Loud and clear. Good. I'm in position. Charge is laid. No fatalities like we agreed. I'm a revolutionary, not a murderer. Right, and that was evident in his post as well, where he called the ambulance for all the human people, but didn't care about the robots. Just get the bloody door open for us. We'll be coming in hot. Don't worry, I will. Max kills a call. Dash collects a briefcase and leaves the toilet, losing herself in the throng of the conference goers as they file into the Iron Hall's main auditorium. The keynote helps pass the time. It's a rousing speech by CEO Cynthia Teclo about the latest devices in Teclatic dynamicism. In Dash's opinion, she makes a strong case for how Teclo Vossen inventions can be further rolled out to cure metrics of its threatening energy crisis to stain the city's bright lights forever. Cogworks representatives fire a barrage of defensive and deconstructive questions at Cynthia while Dash peels off from the end of her row and discreetly exits the auditorium. Moments later, she's poised, moments later, she's poised behind a large pot plant Want watching a pair of enforcer human forms through the plant's rubbery leaves. She doesn't have to wait long. The guard's earpiece crackles with orders, a call out to assist an escape from the 8th precinct station. With the coast clear, Dash crosses the empty hallway, takes the stairs down to the Iron Hall's lower reaches. As she's near the basement, Dash's signal jammer makes short work of the security doors and alarm. She steps into the subterranean cavern of steam and neon. A quick scan with her, uh, with her optical monocle reveals that the maintenance entrance Reveals the maintenance entrance. She hacks the numerical lock. This article is quite long. Pulls the lever and activates her comm as the hefty doors rattle open. Access granted. About time, answers Max. Breathless from running. Make sure not to be followed. What sort of amateur do you take me for, Teclo? Dash cuts the call and makes the most of her time alone. Winding through the maze of steam generators and server stacks, she makes her way to the room's brightest Angie signature. And even though she's mentally prepared herself, she cites that she turns... She, she sights when she turns, leaves her slack jaw. What she sees as she turns the corner, leaves her slack jaw. Like a marionette, it hangs. Okay, so no, she didn't make, she didn't make Data Doll. Right, Data Doll is Teclo's creation. She just got online. Data Doll is the uh, 6.3 processor. Like a marionette, it hangs there, as if suspended between shows of neglectfully, between shows by a neglectful puppeteer. The weaves of strings glow and oscillate through spectrums of color a psychedelic cobweb of connective cabling. Behind it, a green screen rise with figures and abstract facts. The people of metrics disintegrated to millions, disintegrate, yeah, disintegrated to millions of data points. Dead eyes stares, dead eyes stare at Dash from a mask of brash hiding the object of her oper operation. Teclo Vossen's microprocessor. How much is left? There's still quite a lot left, so I think the next article is kind of short. So I think we'll, we'll do them together. Yeah, that's definitely cool. Right, so we'll read about Data Doll and everything else going on and then go into Techno Hope you enjoy.